We hear the word sustainability a lot these days, from sustainable cities to sustainable landscapes and even the notion of sustainable development. But the term sustainability is relatively new. It's difficult to find books or articles before 1976 that use the word in the title or even as a key word. However, since 1980, there's been an explosion of books and articles written about the subject. A quick Google search for sustainability returns over 120 million hits. So does all this excitement make sustainability a buzzword? Yes, but it's so much more than that. Sustainability has a rich, albeit brief, history that has led to new ways of thinking, tackling problems, and finding solutions. The most commonly cited definition of sustainability comes from the 1987 United Nations Report, often referred to as the Brundtland Report. That report defines sustainability as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs, especially the needs of the poor. This definition implies that we need to pay attention to the Earth's natural limits so that people can maintain a high quality of life today and well into the future. So the Brundtland Report popularized the word, but its conceptual drivers stretch back much further than that. Beginning in the 1600s with René Descartes, the Western world conceived of nature as something to be controlled and managed by people. By the 1800s, the Industrial Revolution had offered the Western world a glimpse of an unsustainable society. Rapid production and growth led to urbanization, worker exploitation, air pollution and water pollution at a whole new scale. After two successive world wars, a period of prosperity launched us deeper into a world of consumerism, hyper-industrialism, and consumption. This mindset remained pretty uncontested until the end of the 1960s when we began to think with a different perspective. Society began to view itself as part of nature and not separate from it. During the first trip to orbit the moon, astronauts snapped a photo called Earthrise. It was the first time we saw a real photograph of the Earth. This image had a profound effect on people and is now considered the most influential environmental photograph ever taken. Many consider it to be the spark that started the modern day environmental movement. Shortly after the birth of the environmental movement in the 60s, the US experienced a socio-technical crisis that changed everything. In 1973, and then again in 1979, the members of OPEC proclaimed an oil embargo. During these years, the price of oil skyrocketed and our government was forced to react. American society coped by rationing. So on certain days, gas stations weren't able to open. Imagine a world where on Mondays, only cars with even numbered license plates could fill up and odd numbers would have to wait until Tuesday. For the first time, our government realized our reliance on natural resources. During this 20-year period in our history, the American government began to pass legislation aimed at protecting the natural world. Environmentalism helped politicians, economists, and the general public think in ecological terms. It established the environment as a conceptual prism through which we can view the world and humanity's place in it. Before this, nature and society were understood to be two separate things. But sustainability is not environmentalism. Rather, it's a progression or an offshoot of environmentalism. Sustainability goes further, integrating social justice, economic growth, and environmental thought to influence change. The history of sustainability isn't just environmental. It's social, political, economic, scientific, and technological too. In study, sustainability examines the relationships between society, the economy, and the natural world. This three-way relationship is called the triple bottom line, and it's depicted in a variety of ways that all suggest different relationships. In practice, sustainability aims to find solutions to the complex problems our world faces. The concept of sustainability requires that we think in an all-encompassing way, not just focusing on a couple facets of an issue. And so here we are, today. Think about nanotechnology, synthetic biology, and geoengineering. These fields are progressing rapidly. And so extreme poverty, natural resources, and environmental degradation are more important than ever before. Working in the complexities of our time requires educated citizens. That's why we're calling on teachers to empower their students with values thinking, futures thinking, systems thinking, and strategic thinking. The history of sustainability has led us to our current ability to think critically and solve problems. 
Preparing the next generation is how we write the history of tomorrow.